Kenapa? Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Living Work Community Church. How are you doing today? It's great to have you here. Let's stand together in his presence. In his presence. It's always good to know where you are. And it's not that this building has anything special about it, right? It's when the Lord gathers the body of Christ, those that have been transformed by him. Reborn, as the word says. In our presence as we fellowship and gather together, it's a precious thing. Is it not? Amen. Amen. Yes. It's all his doing. Let's bow our heads and our hearts and thank him for that and many other things. Lord, we come into your presence with praise on our lips this morning as we begin to sing songs in a moment, Lord God. Songs of praise to you from your word, Lord. And God, we just pray you receive them. They would be a sweet offering to you, Lord God. God, I pray for every soul that is here Lord God, that you brought here today and those listening beyond, Father God. God, I just ask that you would just touch hearts in a way, Lord, that would open their eyes, that they may see how great you are, Lord. To know that you love them beyond anybody, anything, anything we could even imagine, Lord God, better than anybody. And you are truly after our hearts as we are after yours, Lord God. And we just thank you that you pursue us and have pursued us and will continue. And we surrender this time, Lord. I pray that each heart here would be taking that time as we sing these songs to meditate upon a surrender to you, lifting up the heart, place it in your hands, Lord, visually, Lord God, and spiritually, Lord, let that be so for each of us as you continue to draw us, Lord, and continue to reveal your truth. And as you reveal your truth through your word, we ask for an anointing upon Pastor Frank this day, Lord God, the teaching of your word, the proclamation of the Holy Word of God. May it go forth boldly from this altar and continue to do so. And this day, God, we ask that your Holy Spirit would again lead in that teaching and that our hearts would be receptive, responsive, and ready to action, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, for this opportunity again to gather as brothers and sisters in Christ. Lord, we pray for our little ones that are here being taught by our teachers. Anoint them, touch them, Lord God. Let them hear your truth and receive. Let those little lives be protected from the enemy, Lord God. In Jesus' name, we pray for that protection. And Lord God, we just ask that as we sing these songs, prepare us again and again. Let us be softened in our heart and hearts, Lord, and ready to receive. And as we give you praise, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. John the Baptist was asked, are you the one? Are you the Messiah? And he said, no. And he pointed to Jesus, right? And he said, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And later on he said, he must increase, and I must decrease. And that's something that we learn as we are sanctified, set apart, and continuing to grow in him. This psalm is from Psalm 43, I'm sorry, 34, verse 3, about being bigger in our lives. Lord, be bigger in our lives. Magnify the Lord. I want you bigger in my life and all around me. I want to see you magnified this day. And when the power of your presence surrounds me, I'm overwhelmed beyond what words can say. All together now, phone. I want you bigger in my life and all around me. I want to see you magnified this day. And when the power of your presence surrounds me, I'm overwhelmed beyond what words can say. Once was running, once was running, shame and down, now I'm held within your hands. Sands were sinking on the shores of life, you're the rock on which I stand. Again, once was running, shame and down, now I'm held within Sinking on the shores of life, you're the rock on which I stand. I want you bigger in my life, all around me. I want to see you magnified this day. 
brightest day. And when the power of your presence surrounds me, I'm overwhelmed beyond what words can say. La da 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 I want you bigger in my life and all around me. I want to see you magnified this day. And when the power of your presence surrounds me, I'm overwhelmed beyond what words can say. Da 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 Oh, magnify, oh, magnify the Lord with me. Oh, let us exalt His name to you. Oh, yes, Lord, His holy hand is on you and me. Let us exalt His name for us. Sing that again, oh, magnify. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt His name together. His holy hand is on you and me. Let us exalt His name forever. I want you bigger in my life all around me. I want to see you magnified this day. And when the power of your presence surrounds me, I'm overwhelmed beyond what words can Crushed in say. spirit from the weight of the world. Crushed in spirit from the way the world now melts within the bed. Sands are sinking on the shores of life. You're the rock on which I'll one more time. Crushed in spirit from the way the world now melts within the bed. Sands are sinking on the shores of life. You're the rock on which I say. I want you bigger in my life. All around me. Oh, yes, we do. I want to see you magnified this day. And when the power of your presence surrounds me, I'm overwhelmed beyond what words can say. Da 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 Oh yes, Lord. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Yes. Let us say so. Let this be your prayer this morning. Let us exalt his name together. His holy hand is on you and me. Let us exalt his name for one more time. Oh, magnify. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt. Holy hands on yes, it is. you and me. Let us exalt His name forever. Hallelujah, Lord God. Oh, holy is the Lord on high. Praise His holy name. Is He bigger than life and better than life for you? I hope He is. Let's get our hands clapping together. Your love is everlasting, it's an everlasting love. Your mercy is as new as every rising of the sun. And your loving kindness, loving kindness, is better than life. Sufficient, it's an all sufficient grace. Your power and your glory are forever on display. And your loving kindness, loving kindness, better than life. 
Yes, it is. Oh, oh, oh. it's better. Oh, oh, oh. it's better than life. Oh, oh, oh. so much better. Jesus, your loving kindness is better than life. Fairest of ten thousand, you are Lord. Fairest of ten thousand, of ten thousand, you are fair. Nothing in this world will ever measure or compare to your loving kindness. Loving kindness, better than life. And all your ways are just, oh Lord, you're just in all your ways. And I will lift my hands, oh Lord, with gratitude and praise For your loving kindness, loving kindness, better than life Oh, sing it out! Oh, 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 oh it's better, oh, 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 it's better than life Oh, 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 so much better Jesus, your love. Oh, sing it again. Oh, 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 it's better. Oh, 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 it's better than life. Oh, 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 so much better. Jesus, your loving kindness is better than life. So we lift up our hands. We lift up our voices to testify. You are good. You are better than life. And life can be so uncertain at times. But your loving never fails. It's why we sing. It's why we sing. Jesus, your loving kindness is better than life is. Your loving kindness is better than life itself. It's better than life. Oh, yes, it is. Oh, oh, oh. Jesus, your love. Oh, one more time. Oh, 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 it's better. Oh, 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 much better than life. Oh, 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 so much better. Jesus, your loving kindness is better than life. Oh, better than life, Lord, better than life, better than life. Yes, your loving kindness, Lord, is better than life itself. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What does hallelujah mean again? It means praise the Lord. That's right. It's good to give him praise. It's to his name. He's so good, so worthy. Praise your name, Lord God. How many of you like reading the Psalms? Raise your hand. Let me see those hands. Come on. All right. Something special about the Psalms, right? They just show the heart. They show the truth in the heart. The end of the heart. End of the heart. End of the (laughs) Psalms. You see a lot of praising. Praise the Lord God. Hallelujah. All creation sings his praise, you know. The trees are lifting their hands up. It's pretty amazing. His creation calls out to him because he is the son of God who holds all things in his hands.
This is the altar of our praise as we sing praise to him, right? Jesus, you are the Son of God. Hallelujah, Lord God. We get a glimpse of the first and the last of Jesus as he proclaimed himself to be the first and the last. The Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end. We see his glory. He goes before us, right? He has gone before us and he goes in intercession before us into the throne of God. How precious that is. If you have not claimed that truth for yourself, I would encourage you to just open your heart as we sing this song. Surrender your heart to the Lord. You are the first. You go before. You are the last, Lord, you're the encore, your name's in the light, 
over all to see the starry host declare your glory glory in the highest glory in the highest glory in the highest worship I missed worship I my flash drive failed when I was in here this morning I had to go back home and uh, redo it but I hope I have it if not I'm gonna ad lib just the Word of God to you this morning yeah we're gonna do that some coming up anyway let's pray together father we thank you Lord God for your love your grace your mercy in our Lord Jesus Christ he is our King he is our God he is our Messiah he is the one who hung on the cross six hours one Friday and he died for us to take away our sins and to reconcile us to you, Lord God, that, Lord God, we could have eternal life with you forever and ever. I pray, Lord God, for everyone here today. And if there is anyone here, Lord God, who hasn't opened their heart, who hasn't taken you into their heart as their Lord and Savior, that would be done, Lord God, 
today before they leave this place. And Lord God, again, we exalt you and we thank you. Lord, just, you know, so many times we're not aware of those times of protection, those provisions. Lord God, sometimes we're, you know, we're, we're just down on what's going on, Lord God, in our lives. And Lord God, we just need to take time and stop and realize, Lord God, footprints in the sand. Lord God, you've been carrying us. You've been protecting us. You've been providing us when we were not even aware of it. So, Lord God, we thank you. We want to thank you for all these things that we're aware of. And, Lord God, 10,000 times 10,000 more, Lord God, that we're not aware of. Thank you for your blessing upon Living Word Community Church. Lord God, we, we really want to come today and sit at your feet and worship you and glorify you. And, Lord God, I just pray that you would be with us in all your fullness and grace this morning. And we pray this all in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hey, God bless you all. Good to see you here today. Say hello to one another. Met a great guy out in the hallway, Jose. Jose, it's good to have you here today. Yeah, come up. I'm just going to set this up. Good morning, church. Good morning. How are we doing today? Great. Great worship, right? Nice to see you. I'm going to give you some uh, quick announcements. Again, make sure you take notes or take pictures, right? Because this is for the church. So we're going to get started uh, this week's Bible study. First, we have a tomorrow men's Bible study at 7 p.m., Tuesday women's Bible study at 9.45 a.m., Friday men's Bible study at 7 p.m. Take a picture. All right, I'm going to do it again. How many of you here are men today? Raise your hand. Last time, like, there were guys with beards not raising their hands. I was a little concerned. <laughs> <laughs> Tomorrow night, we have Men of Abundance, 7 o'clock. We are in 2 Kings. Come join us. This is the place you get to gather in fellowship and study the word with brothers. Right? Right. <laughs> right. Please, come and join us. All right, uh, second thing, Spanish Worship Night. Spanish Worship Night is this Friday at 7 p.m. here in the church. Join us for an evening of worship in Spanish. So, para lo que, los que hablan español, va a haber, um, eh, vamos a cantar viernes a las 7, entonces vengan viernes a las 7, ok? No dicen español, pero ahí está, ok? T uh, tomen una foto. Ok, Extraordinary Moms Ministry is meeting next Sunday at 12.15 in the parent-child room here on my right. We will be collecting men's coats in gently used or new condition for people in need the entire month of October. You can drop off your coats today in the Rock Center on the table. Rock Center is there in the back for those of you who are new, okay? Also, we have the Harvest Party. We do this every year. It's a lot of fun for the kids. It's going to be on Monday, October 31st at 6 p.m. There was an email that was sent out to um, the church. If you, don't, if you haven't given us your email, then you didn't receive it. But um, Rachel, uh, she sent over the services, um, the, the messages that Pastor Frank spoke about why we don't celebrate Halloween. Okay? And, and it's really important because it says it in the Word, and we should know the reason why. Okay, so thank you for those who have signed up to serve. So far, we still need 13 more people to serve. If you want to help out at the Harvest Party, you can sign up online. An email was sent out this week or last week uh, with the information to sign up. If you didn't receive the email, see Rachel. Remember to drop off your candy and small prize donations in the box in the Welcome Center. And lastly, save the date. This is a lot of fun, too. Not a parent yet, but I've gone to two, okay? So this is really good, um, a lot of good information, uh, information from the Bible, right? Um, advice from the Bible, because that, that's where we get our advice, from the Bible. So save the date. We will be having a parenting seminar here at the church on Saturday, November 12th. Make note of that, parents. Um, and those of you who are not parents as well. Uh, Sign-ups will begin next Sunday, October 9th. We are looking for some of the youth to help out with the children of the parents attending the seminar. Youth, where are you at? Right there. Okay, we're looking for youth to help out um, to babysit. Okay, uh, babysit that day. Please see Ritter. All right, so do we have any guests today? We would like to welcome you. Any guests, please raise your hand. Welcome here on my right. Welcome. Anybody else, raise your hand. Okay, we're going to give you some right here, information. Here, oh, welcome to you guys as well. Welcome. 
We're going to give you information okay. about our church. Behind you. Okay. Um, babe, over there. <laughs> <laughs> information about our church, please fill it out whenever you're done filling it out. Just uh, hand it over to the... Uh, uh, down there on your on my left hand side sorry about that we'll give you a free jesus dvd okay so make sure you fill that out okay god bless you guys you know brenda has accused me of talking too fast from up here but i don't know brenda you were talking really fast now you're i'm not sure if it's the coffee or what you're talking about but you were really talking really fast <laughs> forget about the spanish part just the english was kind of fast today but really well done i guess right i gotcha <laughs> i don't really talk that fast do i everybody all right we're going to stop the bad humor and go into our collection time so you know a time of offering is part of our worship time, right? That's what it's intended to be, and it should be. Um, and because of COVID and all the crazy things going on, we stopped doing that. So we have reinstated that. So the baskets are up here. If the ushers could come forward, we're going to uh, pass the baskets around for the, point, the purpose of you taking time while we're singing this last song before the word and just making an offering to the Lord. You can still use the, basket, um, the boxes in the back if you like, and, and if you don't want to put anything in the basket here. And do what you've been doing all along. But it's just an opportunity to do so. There's something different, I think, about having something in your hand that you place in a basket like that. But nonetheless, uh, we have great opportunity here to do so. Let's bow our heads and our hearts. Father, we are grateful for this time, Lord, you've given us to be able to give back to you. We are grateful for your provision, Lord. We see it all around. We know that you are providing for us in ways, Lord God, that we don't even see. Yet we look back and we see your provision. It's amazing. And we love you for that, Lord. And we love you for many things. But... We just love that you care for us better than we can care for ourselves, and you provide in ways that we just don't get, and we are thankful, Lord, for your provision. And God, we ask that you multiply this offering of ourselves, of our time that we've put in wherever we've worked, Lord God, whatever it may be, we offer back to you just a part of that, Lord. We know that you've called us to be stewards of that which we keep, to honor you with that and advance your kingdom, Lord. But this part, Lord, we give to you in, in advancing the kingdom here at Living Word, Lord, and and through our missionaries and, and others that we serve, Lord and Father. And God, we just ask that you would multiply it and that it would be an honorable gift to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Glory in the For the harvest party, it's a harvest party. We don't celebrate Halloween here, and we encourage uh, you and your children not to celebrate Halloween. It's a demonic holiday. By the way, if you go on our, if you go to our website, uh, you go back 2016, and you look at October. I did a series on Halloween, and uh, I'll tell you after you watch that, I think you're going to change your mind about everything about Halloween. But I just want to say this to you: for those of you who are not listening to me, listen to me now, because if your kids are going out and they're going to do trick or treating. They are seeding candy with fentanyl, okay? Colorful little fentanyl tablets that they're putting into certain candy. So you got some really sick people out there, right? When I was a kid and we used to, I was raised in a non-Christian home and we would go trick-or-treat and we were always worried my mother would be looking through the uh, candy for pins and razor blades and apples that these sickos, you know, they, they do. But this is, uh, this, is, this is wild because this stuff will just kill a kid in a second. 100,000 people have been killed by fentanyl in the United States. That's another thing that's coming over the border right now. And uh, boy, does anybody even talk about it, right? They don't even mention it. And uh, it's, it's crazy. But just, you know, if you're going you're gonna to have your kids out there, I'm just warning you, be careful. Because uh, that's, it's just some really, some really crazy stuff that the devil's doing in our, you know, in our current time. Okay, so I'm going to talk with you today. Can I get that up? 
I'm in. I had some technical problems here this morning when I got here. Let's see if we can, uh, we can get this up. Let's see. All right. We got signs of the times. Good. And I got control. We started last week talking about signs of the times. We're going through the gospel of Mark. We're in Mark chapter 13. I'm going to be spending probably the next uh, few weeks talking about signs of the times. This is going to be signs of the times part two. Stand with me for the reading of the word. Mark chapter 13 verses 1 through 8. So the word of our Lord. Then as he went out of the temple, one of his disciples said to him, Teacher, see what manner of stones... And what buildings are here? And Jesus answered and said to him, Do you see these great buildings? Not one stone shall be left upon another that shall not be thrown down. Now as he sat on the Mount of Olives opposite the temple, Peter, James, John, and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us when will these things be and what will be the sign when all these things will be fulfilled? And Jesus answered them, began to say, Take heed that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name, saying, I am he, and will deceive many. But when you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be troubled, for such things must happen. But the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there will be earthquakes in various places, and there will be famines and troubles. These are the beginning of sorrows. Heavenly Father, I pray, Lord God, open up our hearts and minds, Lord God. I truly believe we're living in the last hour. We're living in the last day, Lord God. And... Lord Jesus, you're coming back soon for your bride. You, told, you called us, Lord God, to be ready. You called us to watch. And Lord God, I pray that you would instill each and every one of us a heart, Lord God, of, of that spiritual awareness of the time we're in and how close we are, that none would be left behind, Lord God. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So uh, if, you, uh, if you're alive and well on planet Earth, uh, you look at what Jesus is saying here, and uh, it's, it's got to hit you that we're seeing many of these things in this you know, current day, in this current hour. In fact, just, just this week, okay, just, <laughs> it was like, I'm, watch, I'm watching Matthew and Mark chapter 13, Matthew chapter 24, and Luke chapter 21 on the news uh, each day, but okay, you all obviously are familiar with what happened with Hurricane Ian. How many of you, you know, have heard that there are uh, massive floods happening in Pakistan in the past week? You know about what's going on, obviously, in the Ukraine, with the Ukrainian war with the Russians. You hear about wars and rumors of wars with what's going on right now with China and Taiwan. How many of you have heard about the famine right now in Somalia where 27 million people are starving to death and dying daily? I don't know how many of you have seen that. That's not something they're putting on the news. Uh, riots, social unrest. This week, Russia, Iran, Holland having riots. Some of the, the top-selling books on Amazon, and these are not written by Christians. These are non-Christian authors. How to Survive the End of the World. Uh, Lester Brown, World on the Edge. Uh, where Will World War III Start? Um, James Wesley Rawls. How to Survive the End of the World as We Know It. Just some books that, you know, just the, the common stuff and the common stuff that's being, uh, you know, put out on the History Channel that you see in, you know, different medias. Movies, TV shows, just this uh, awareness that something very strange is going on in our world in this current hour. I want, you to, I want you to notice the passage I just read to you. When you come down to verse 8, Jesus said, These are the beginning of sorrows. That's very important because it's really a poor translation. The word for sorrows is odun, and it talks about birth pains, child birth pains. So what Jesus is, is comparing here, he's comparing the uh, pains, okay, the birth pains at the end times with a woman, okay, who's experiencing birth pains as she goes into labor. So there, there, are, there are two key things, and ladies, you could teach this far better than I, okay, with, with birth pains, essentially, there is a greater increase of frequency, right? So they, they start off, you know, and I'm, I've done this three times with my, you know, my wife and uh, now with my, my daughter and daughters. You know, they start off with, you know, they're, they're an hour apart. And then they're 30 minutes apart. 
and then they're 15 minutes apart, five minutes apart, one minute apart, and the ladies are smiling. God bless you. I praise the Lord every day that God didn't make me a woman. I really do. You're much stronger than us with what you have to endure with all, with all things. And then there are a few seconds apart. So you understand that birth pains, so they're, you know, they're, they were infrequent, and then they're increasing more and more in frequency. Then birth pains also increase in intensity. Right, at, at, at first they're kind of minor. I remember my wife with uh, giving birth to Rachel. Like the first, the first couple of birth pains were not too bad. Right, they were minor. But this is going to be, this is going to be easy. Right, this is, my wife's teaching upstairs. I'm, you know, she's not here. But <laughs> then mild, then intense, then they become strong, and then you got you got these these mega pains. And we went through this program with uh, with Rachel called um, Lamaze. Lamaze. They they teach you, and they teach the man to coach the wife, right? On on how, and they teach you to count. Right? So you, it's like you go one, two, three, four, and I'm going to her one, two, three, four, and then one, two, and she goes, stop it! <laughs> so much for the $500 for Lamaze. We didn't use it for the next two kids. So they just increase and increase. Now, I want to show you something here. This is, this is important. There is a direct correlation Okay, and I don't have Mark up here. I have Matthew and Luke. The, they're both, again, the Olivet Discourse. Jesus is last week. He taught it on Wednesday. He was crucified on Friday. But you'll notice here there's a direct correlation between the Olivet Discourse and Matthew, and, and again, Mark and Luke, and the book of the Revelation, chapter 6. And I'm going to show you that today. So when, when you, you have false Christs, again, Revelation 6, 1 and 2, you have the ultimate false Christ, wars. You have, uh, let me tell you, the mega, the mega wars, famines, death, martyrs, global chaos. We're going we're gonna to look at this a little bit today. We're going to look at it a little bit more next week. So it's just important to realize that. So let's, let's dig in and let's look. Signs of the times, the first sign Jesus mentions is deception. And uh, really, two, two sides to this. He says, and Jesus answered them, began to say, take heed that no one deceives you. And then he says, for many will come in my name, saying, I am he, and will deceive many. So he, he talks here about deception. We immediately think, of course, about religious deception. And there, there is. We're living in a time of massive religious deception. It's, it's in the church. It's in the churches. And then you can look at mass media, <laughs> Mass media deception, and let me tell you, it's just, I mean, what is, you know, what is just told us every day, I mean, I tell you something, I don't believe, I don't believe the media. It's just, it, it's crazy. Then you have, you have political deception. I mean, how many, how many of you, you know, you look at, at what, what's being projected from the White House, right? You know what? There is no inflation. That's what he said a few weeks ago. He said we have zero inflation. You know what? The, just com the communists, if you, you studied communism, they continue to tell lies over and over and over again. And a large portion of the populace will buy into it and believe it. And um, that, is something, that is something that you see right now in, you know, in, in, in government. And not only our government, but governments throughout the world. The reason we have inflation, according to our government and the White House, is because of Putin's war. But if you know about inflation, inflation was skyrocketing when they closed down the pipelines. And they basically uh, you know, outlawed the offshore drilling and uh, the drilling for natural gas. Again, it's just, it's, it, 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 they're, they're just lies. There's no problem at the border. Yet human trafficking <laughs> and the cartels are, are just, it, it's crazy what they're doing with children and with women and with young boys. And again, you have this, this you know, inflow of drugs 
And uh, I mean, j- j- with fentanyl, which is, is killing, which is killing thousands of people every week. But again, it's all, it's all just, you know, it's all denial. It's all denial. But that, you know, that's what you, you have, you have political deception. Then you have, you have science deception. I want to, I want to show you this. Jeff Hancock, the professor, a professor of communication at Stanford, uh, searched the archives of PubMed. PubMed is where they, they basically put out all of these uh, supposedly new scientific, you know, discoveries. And um, he basically went to the database of those science journals from 1973 to 2013 for retracted papers. These were papers where they found error or deception. And they identified 253 primarily from biomedical journals, uh, essentially that had to be retracted and basically changed because of fraud. 253 of what the scientific community tells us. You know, Chuck Missler, one of my, one of my teachers, Chuck Missler say, government agencies all lie. And this is a man who worked in government. But he says, NASA, who we, you know, we look to as the great scientific agency, he says, NASA lies all the time. But you look, you look right? Science says, science, there are only two genders. That's what science says. But again, now what do we have? 493 genders? You got a new one every week. It doesn't, when it doesn't fit their narrative, okay, they reject science. Right? COVID, follow the science. <laughs> again, when it, when it didn't meet their narrative, right, they, 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 they threw it out. Science says life begins at conception. Again, when it doesn't fit the narrative, right, throw it out. So you have, you have, you have deception in, in, the, in, the sci, you know, in the scientific realm. Then, again, false Christ. And, uh, you know, Jim Jones, Young Sung Moon, Mitchell. These are all, that, by the way, they're dead. But they all claim to be Jesus and had followers. I mean, Young Sung Moon of the millions, and it's interesting, you, you, can find, you can find somebody claiming to be Jesus just, you know, just about in any city, in, in, in any, in, in any um, nation. Here is the Russian Jesus. This is Sergio Torop. He was a traffic cop. He's got a following of about 30,000 people. This, now, he, this guy passed away, this guy died, Dr. Jose Luis de, de Jesus Miranda. He was the Puerto Rican Jesus. Nelly, Puerto Rican Jesus. He had a following of 20,000. His, his wife has taken over the ministry. They still have a following of 20,000. But again, G- Jesus, Jesus of all different colors, of all different places. This, this is the Brazilian Jesus, uh, Jesus on a scooter. These guys have, have, have followings of thousands of people. Uh, the Australian Jesus, Alan John Miller, right? I'm Jesus, he says, deal with it. So just false Christ and deception. Now, when you go to the book of the Revelation, chapter six, okay. And let me let me just uh, let me just have you focus in here for a second. Revelation six, one and two, right? You have the four horsemen of the apocalypse. These are the the, the seal judgments. The first of the four seal judgments. But the first one, it says, "Now I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard one of the four living creatures say with a loud, with a voice like thunder, come and see.' And I looked, and behold, a white horse. Right, he comes on a white horse. He comes in peace. And he who sat on it had a bow, and a crown was given to him, and he went out conquering and to conquer. I mean, that, that is, again, that is the ultimate deception, the deception of the Antichrist, because he comes in peace, he comes to bring peace, peace, and there is no peace, and he deceives the unbelievers into believing that he's the Savior, that he's the Savior of the world. And the world is waiting, the world is waiting for this. You look at the religions of the world, right? Uh, by the way, e- you know, deceived Christianity is waiting for some type of Jesus. And again, I believe that, that, that deceived Christianity will be deceived. The unbelievers in the churches 
They'll look and they'll say it's the Antichrist. But they won't recognize him as the Antichrist. Islam is waiting for their Messiah. The Jews are waiting for their Messiah. So the world, the world has been really set up for this. Even the atheists, the agnostics, the, you know, the, the, the world order people, they're waiting for their king and their Messiah to come. So the Antichrist comes and he comes in peace, but then he brings destruction. All right, number two, wars and rumors of wars. So in, again here, verse 7. But when you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be troubled, for such things must happen, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. So again, when we step back here, well, there have always been wars. Right? If you study human history, human history has been a, a history of, of, of war and, and, and killing and, and, and murder. But if you look at, at where we are today, in the previous 100 years, let's go 100 years right today, there have been more people, over, over 100 million people killed in war. I'll tell you, that's more than the people who have been killed in wars for the last 1,000 years. At the, at, the current, at the current moment, there are 59 conflicts, okay, that are going on in the world. And you know what's, what's interesting? A word that Jesus is, uses here, nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom, the word is ethnikos, and, and it's, it's people of the same ethnic, ethnicity, ethnicity, ethnicity. Ethnicity, and I'm a public speaker by trade. <laughs> Ethnicity, and the, the, the people that, and what do you, what, you know, where do you see that happening? Again, revolutions. So you, you see that, that's what's happening in the Ukraine. You know what, These, the Ukrainians and the Russians are brothers, and they're killing each other. You, you can see what's going on again, wars and rumors of wars, with what's happening in China and Taiwan. Uh, Yemen. Again, the, 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 the civil war that's going on in Yemen. How about, how about just south of the border with what's going on in Mexico? There, there have been over 150,000, 164,345 people that have been killed in Mexico with the drug war, with the cartels that is going on. That, that's more, and you see, that's more than Afghanistan, that's more than Iraq, that's more than Korea and Vietnam put together. Hey, let's go on vacation to Mexico. I talked to a, 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 a pastor. We had a friend who was a pastor, went down to Cancun. They kidnapped him and held him for a ransom. First they wanted five grand, then they wanted five grand, and then they wanted five grand. And the family kept coming up with the money to keep paying. Finally, they let him go. But he was down there for, for quite a while. I mean, and it's like America is becoming kind of like that now. Revelation chapter 6, verses 3 and 4, again, the intensity, the frequency. When you come to the tribulation period, it says here, and when he opened the second seal, I heard the second living creature say, saying, come and see another horse, fiery red one, and it was granted to the one who sat on it to take peace from the earth, and that people should kill one another, and there was given to him a great sword. So that is, that is I mean, that's, the war to end all wars of what you see, in, again, in, in the book of the Revelation with, you know, the second, you know, the second horseman. It's the war to end all wars. So there are wars going on, and there have been wars going on, and this has been the bloodiest, the bloodiest century in the history of mankind, but it gets worse, the intensity and the frequency. The next sign of the time, earthquakes, seismos, seismos. So if you look here down at verse 8, earthquakes in various places. Now, it's important. The word seismos, it, it, it doesn't just refer to earthquakes. We get the seismos of seismology, but it, it, the word is used. In fact, when Jesus calmed the storm, when they're crossing the Sea of Galilee, it says that it was a seismos. So, seismos refers to, it can refer to earthquakes, and can refer to tornadoes, to hurricanes, to cyclones, to earthquakes, to volcanic eruptions, to wildfires, to floods. We call them natural disasters. Okay, more than just, just simply an earthquake. But I want to show you, I want to show you something here. I've studied this, been doing this, geez, for years, since the 1980s. And um, just, you're going to notice, I'm going to show you a bunch of graphs. I'm going to go into great detail with them today, but... 
Notice how the graphs go from the lower left to the upper right. Okay, through the, through the years. These are, th these are volcanic eruptions. Uh, tropical, subtropical storms, 1878 to 2020. You see again that, that graph, it goes from the lower left to the upper right. Uh, wildfires from 1970 up to, uh, through 2018. Again, lower left, upper right. This is an uh, increased uh, share of, of, of climate-driven events. Again, lower left, upper right. Increased earthquakes. Uh, look at this. This is from the 10th century to 19th century. Lower left to the upper right. And global natural disasters, again, lower left to the upper right. So just, just in September, okay, not last week, but the entire month of September, you had two major hurricanes, Fiona and Ian. We've got about Fiona real quick, and Ian came on the scene. There has been flooding in Nigeria, South Africa, Pakistan, Honduras, typhoons in Philippines and, and Laos, uh, flooding in Russia, wildfires in Russia, volcanic eruption in Ecuador, and um, in Ecuador, actually there was a second one too, and I, I basically totaled them up, I was getting this from the, one of these weather reports. There were 33 natural disasters that happened on the planet in September of 2022. That's a, that's a lot of things, right? A lot of natural disasters. So you want, one of the questions you have to ask, that you know, I ask myself, global warming or God's warning? And if it's being caused by global war, uh, warming, uh, warming, all I can say is... Uh, God warned us beforehand, <laughs> and I believe he's warning us now. All right, fourth sign, famines. So down in uh, verse 8, again, famines and troubles. I, I mentioned to you at the beginning of the message, the drought in Somalia, you have 27 million people who are starving. All right, there's some good Christian ministries. You can be sending some things and get food to those people but they're, they're starving. The Ukraine war, let me just share this with you, because the Ukraine war is going right now to create some major starvation and famines in the world. The Ukraine uh, basically produced 24% of the global wheat exports to the entire world, and they've not been able to get the crop in the ground. They're not going to be able to get the crop out of the ground. 57% of sunflower seed, okay, and that's essentially the sunflower seed oil that's used in most of your, you know, foods that, you know, you buy in the store. And 14% of corn. So the, the, the areas where most of this grain, this corn, the oils we're going to is northern Africa and the Middle East. So you're going to see in these upcoming, upcoming months, you're going to see a great increase in starvation and famine in those places. And then, just well, I'll, I'll read you this. This is... Um, just kind of showing what's going on in the world. 800 million hungry, 2 billion micronutrient deficient, that's vitamins and minerals, 1.9 billion overweight and obese, and 160 million under, uh, under five, you know, stunted. But while part of this, this world is getting fat, the other part of the world is starving. And uh, that's why I say, you know what? It's worthwhile to eat a little less so that someone else can eat. Think about that. What a great weight loss product uh, program that would be. If you just said, I'm, I'm not going to, you know what, I'm not going to eat those donuts today that cost $8 at Dunkin' Donuts. Instead, I'm going to give the $8 that somebody else, and that's, I know that's really radical. That's Jesus radical stuff, so I'll be careful with that. Don't want anybody walking out this morning. I don't want to offend anybody. When you come again to the book of the Revelation, chapter 6, the third seal, the third horseman. When he opened the third seal, I heard a third living creature say, come and see. So I looked and behold, a black horse, and he who sat on it had a pair of scales in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four living creatures saying, a quart of wheat for a denarius and three quarts of barley for a denarius. That's a day's wages just to get, to get a little loaf of bread. It's going to cost a day's wages. And do not harm the oil and the wine. So again, it, it, it's, it's happening now with greater intensity and frequency, but when you come to the tribulation period, I mean, it's, it's full-blown. Okay, number five, pestilence. 
So in, in verse 10, okay, I'm actually going to verse 10 and 11 of Luke, okay, because this is not included in Mark, it's not included in Matthew, but Luke includes the word pestilence, leomos, disease, plague, uh, pests, it could be insects. And um, again, just looking, I mean, we're, we're all, I think, very aware of what's happening. This one hit home, but emerging diseases. And there were, I mean, there are all these diseases that just a few years ago you never heard of. Right? You don't, you know, just a few years ago, you didn't hear of COVID, right? You have, you have COVID, you have, I mean, HIV, uh, SARS, Lyme disease. Actually, COVID is a part of, of, of SARS. Lyme disease, E. coli. Um, hantavirus, dengu fever, West Nile virus, uh, Zika virus. I mean, these are, these are all new emerging viruses. There's probably a whole lot more. Oh, oh, monkeypox. Oh, monkeypox. I know that these you, people are getting monkeypox. You go to there's no bananas in in the um, food stores. <laughs> it was a joke. Kind of a poor joke, but it was a joke. <laughs> so you have the emerging diseases, and then you have re-emerging diseases that basically include malaria, uh, tubercular, uh, uh, TB, uh, cholera, pertussis, influenza, the flu, uh, pneumococcola, if I say it right, cocol, and, um, and emerging uh, uh, STDs. Here's something, here's something that'll curl, curl your hair, and if I had some, it would curl mine. Uh, in 2018, one in five people in the U.S. have an STI, a sexually transmitted, right, illness. That's, uh, that's crazy. One in five people, 68 million. That was in 2008. It's probably a lot more than that now. So, so uh, you know, uh, again, the, the increase of, of pestilence, again, you have the, the four horsemen. Now, again, you have war. You have famine, right? You have disease. What does that result in? Well, I just want to show you again. People are dying. Look, we, we we've have loved ones who died of COVID. We we look and we look at what's going on. You know, going on around. We see people starving. We see wars that that are you know that are that people are being killed. But when you come again, the increase in frequency and the increase intensity, when you come to the fourth horseman, this is, this is, this is a frightening verse. In verse 7 and 8 of Revelation chapter 6, when he opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth living creature saying, come and see. So I looked and behold, a pale horse and the name of him who sat on it, it's not Clint Eastwood, if you've seen the movie. And the name of him who sat on it was death, and Hades followed with him, and power was given to them over a fourth of the earth to kill with sword, with hunger, with death, and by the beasts of the earth. I just want you to know a fourth. How many people are on the earth right now? It's, it's, it's almost just a fraction below 8 billion people right now. So if a quarter of all the earth's population were killed right by, by war, sword, by hunger. Um, in fact, the word death is, is, is thatos. And it basically, it's, again, that's a, death is a poor translation. It should be plague. Thatos is translated in other places as, as plague. But you have pestilence, you have disease, beasts, venomous beasts. That's two billion people who will die at the beginning of the tribulation. The beginning. It goes on to say that half the world's population will be wiped out when you get to the trumpet judgments in the book of the Revelation. Because you have a series, a series of judgments in the book of the Revelation between chapter 6 and chapter 18. You have seven seal judgments, seven trumpet judgments, and seven bowl judgments of where it essentially culminates. Seven years. Remember as we looked at last week, Daniel's last week, seven years. Jacob's trouble the tribulation. Okay, I'll give you one more sign. You ready? The uh, sixth sign for today, fearful sights and great signs from heaven. Again, from the Gospel of Luke, 
chapter 21, 10 and 11, then he said to them, nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, and there will be great earthquakes in various places and famines and pestilences, and there will be fearful sights and great signs from heaven. Phobitron, phobia. Phobia, and essentially the word semen, fearful wonders in the Uranus, okay, in, in, in the sky, N not in the third heaven, in the, in the sky around us, there will be these, these fearful wonders. People will be, be looking up and saying, what is that? Have you seen anything? Most people don't look up. They're, most people go through life like this. They, they really, honestly, how, many, how much time do you ever spend just looking up at the sky? Yeah, I, I, I look up a lot. I spend some time every day just looking, looking up at what's going on up in the sky. So now, some things have kind of been brought out of the closet by, uh, by the media. I think the government's still, you know, basically hiding a lot of things. And uh, just the, the UF, you know, UFO sightings that have been caught on camera. Please let me say something to you. Because right now, if you don't hear what I say, you're going to walk out of here. And uh, as some people have through the years and just, t just not understanding what I'm saying. I am not here gonna talk to you about little green men because I don't believe in little green men. I do not believe in extraterrestrials who have come from another galaxy or from Mars or from Venus or anywhere else. I believe in extra dimensionals because that's what the Lord has given us in the book. Extra dimensionals, okay? Angels and demons. So I believe what, in fact, this, one of the most incredible videos, this was a Navy pilot that, that filmed this. You could see this live. This was the, the thing moving through the sky that suddenly went down into the ocean and moving at these, these astronomical speeds. And I'll, I'll say this to you. Some of this stuff... It could be military stuff that have been, you know, invented and developed by the United States, by China, by Russia, Britain, France. It could be. So I'm not, I'm not saying everything here is um, extra dimensional. But there are some things, I'm going to show you something, that, that just, it violates, they violate physics. And this is where there's a, you know, there's a major problem. So here's an example. Air traffic controllers report having seen these, these blips, but suddenly a blip here appears here in a split second, in a twinkling of an eye, and then suddenly it disappears. And then it appears here. And then it disappears, and then it appears here. And there are air traffic controllers. By the way, the, the, the pilots, the military pilots, the commercial pilots, the air traffic controllers, astronauts, you can get a whole list of astronauts who claim they have seen things. Politicians, presidents, Hollywood people, that, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry about that. Just. <laughs> They're on drugs anyway. They're seeing all kinds of things anyway out there. But, but the, these are, they put, they're, they're basically putting their careers on the line by saying they have seen these things. So what, what the air traffic controllers, they can't explain this. And again, whatever is bleeping in and out of, of our four-dimensional universe, okay, something is moving in from another dimension and then moving out. That's, that's the, the only possible way that you can, you can explain that. Now, this is a, a, neat, a neat map. By the way, you, those of you on Facebook, I, I wanted to get this live for you. This is, this is cool. These are all the sightings of so-called UFOs. All, all of these red dots uh, of what people have said they have seen. And by the way, it, it really started to intensify in 1947. Now, some interesting things happened around 47 and 48. Uh, at Jerusalem and Israel becoming a, a nation, but uh, that, those are those are. Well, here's here's another. This is another one. Four hundred fifty-eight thousand two hundred and fifty-eight of the sightings between 1995-2014. Couldn't get some of the up, uh, uh, updated stuff. 
So I'll show you, I want to show you a video. This is one of my favorite videos. I've kind of done as much work. I mean, I've been looking at this thing for 10 years. And um, I mean, there's, there's a lot of fake stuff out there. And now with, with technology, I mean, they can, they can just put something in there and just fool everybody. So there's, there's a lot of fake stuff. But this, this was um, a video that was taken over Jerusalem. And there were a number of other videos taken from, from different sites and different angles. And um, just, just, I want you to see this. This is, this is really I incredible. So, you, you know, just focus in here. That is the uh, Temple Mount, okay? And there's this light, okay, shining right there. And I want to show you what, what happened. By the way, if, does anybody speak Hebrew? Okay, so don't interpret it, but the woman in the video, I think she says a cuss word in Hebrew. So I, I don't know, though, because I've never heard, but let's watch this. Can we have sound? Yo. You see how fast that thing moved? You ever see a rocket taking off, right? Now Tesla, you know, Elon Musk shooting his rockets up. You ever see how, how slowly we can watch them ascending into the sky? That thing was a split second that when, it, when it went up there. And uh, again, just totally violated the laws, the laws of physics. So the, the question is, you know, I, I look at this and my view is that these things are moving in and out, again, of our four-dimensional universe. They're, they're, not, they're not of our dimension. They're extra-dimensional, moving in from another dimension. By the way, I was teaching here on a Wednesday night a couple of uh, weeks ago, and I was showing that the Bible teaches there's about 11 different dimensions that are revealed to us in the Scripture so they, they are moving in from another dimension into our, again, four-dimensional uh, universe. So I want to I introduce you to somebody here, to a few minutes, if you bear with my, my silliness. I want to introduce you to the Flat family. Some of you I've introduced you to the Flat family before. These are the Flats. They're two-dimensional, okay? They can move up and down, and they can move from side to side. But they can't move in, in, in depth. They can't move back and they can't move forward. So they just, again, they move like this and they move up and down. They're the, they're the flat family. Okay, say hello, everybody. To wave to the flat family. Okay. So then there, there, are, there are these extra dimensionals that basically come from another dimension, the, the, the dimension that these extra dimensionals live in. They have depth. So suddenly they can just pop in and pop out, right? They could suddenly pop in, right? Oh, they pop in and then they pop out. Does that remind you of something? The scriptures, angels, demons popping in and popping out, right? Not only do the angels pop in and pop out, guess who else can pop in and pop out? He can pop in, pop out. They're moving in and out of our dimensions. So in um, Ezekiel, Ezekiel chapter 1 and chapter 2, Ezekiel has a vision of, um, of the throne of God. And uh, I believe that's the, the Lord Jesus sitting on the throne. And he sees, he sees these, these strange things, these wheels. Wheels intersecting wheels. Ezekiel chapter 1. Haven't you heard of this before? I hope you have. And that there are these, these creatures, these angelic creatures, that essentially dwell within the wheels. And where the creatures go, the wheels go. Up, down, in, out, these... I don't know what the wheels are. 
But these angelic creatures are able to somehow, again, inhabit these wheels and move in and, 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 and move about. And they always move at right angles. That's interesting. Right angles. If you ever you, you study, you study the sightings that people are saying, they, they're always moving at right angles, at massive speeds. So what I believe, again, coming back to the uh, flat family, I believe what the flat family is experiencing, these wheels popping in and out. And uh, again, the numbers of what people are seeing right now and the things that are now being revealed to us by our military, right? They're just, they're, they're basically, there's something out there, right? That's what they're saying now. There's something, there's something happening. And uh, if you want to, if you really want to dig into this, again, I've, I've done and I've spent, I spent a month teaching on this stuff because I, I, I think it is really important because it's a great deception. You've got people who do not believe in God. They do not believe in Jesus Christ. They do not believe in the Bible. They, they believe in little green men. That's their God. That's their religion. You ever see the, uh, I, think it's, I think it's on the History Station, the uh, UFO, the, yeah, just a, a mega production. Mike, what is that called? All the UFO shows. You got the guy with the hair, the Greek guy with the hair. Ancient right? aliens. Yeah, ancient aliens. That's a, it's a religion. I believe it's a, it, it's a great deception. But if you really wanted to dig into this, and I, I, I love this book. It's called Alien Encounters by Chuck Missler and Mark Eastman. That is a great book. It's about 300 pages, and uh, Chuck, Chuck is, a, is, I mean, Chuck, Chuck is home with the Lord, but Chuck, one of the most brilliant Christian she, uh, teachers in the last 100 years. But you want to you wanna dig in there and, uh, and just see what he's saying. But this again, this is, this is, I believe there is going to be a connection, I said this on our podcast on Thursday night, I believe there's going to be some type of strange, extra, it's going to be tried to portray it as an extraterrestrial deception upon the world, extra-dimensional, okay? That it'll actually be Satan with the Antichrist. But I, I believe that, you know, we, something, talk about the world being set up. You talk, you talk to evolutionary scientists, atheists, who do not believe in God, okay? And, and you, can look at, you could look at an interview, I think it was Richard Dawkins with... Um, Oh, the Jewish, the Jewish guy. He was, <laughs> he was on Ferris Bueller. What's his name? Ben Stein. Ben Stein. Pull up Ben Stein, and um, and Richard Dawkins. Richard Dawkins, like the 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 the, the mega atheist. And um, Ben Stein is talking. So he doesn't believe in God. So Ben Stein asks him, then, how did we get here? How did how did living matter? Living matter, right? Li living matter, you know, suddenly appear on Earth. Because, and he didn't say this, this is my, because non-living matter cannot produce living matter. I could take the most, two most beautiful rocks on earth, and I could do a wedding ceremony for them right here, and get them a really nice hotel room, and let them spend the week together, and they're not going to produce living matter. <laughs> so he asked them the question, how, how does non-living matter produce living matter? And of course, scientifically, it doesn't. So um, Richard Dawkins, he said, he, and he, he then referred to what is called transpermia, that aliens came here and seeded the earth with, 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 with life, and that's how the evolutionary process began. By the way, if you've ever watched, I think it's Mission to Mars, that's where th that comes to that conclusion, that aliens came and they see now, now here's, here's a problem with that. So where did the aliens get life from? Right? And he didn't ask him that question. But, but I was watching that interview and I'm thinking to myself, well, that's the question I would have asked him. Okay, so there are aliens from somewhere far out in Alpha Centauri who came, seeded the earth millions of years ago, and that's how life has basically evolved. But then who created them? And that's, that's where our modern scientific world um, has, has really kind of come to with evolution. They can't explain how non-living matter could produce living matter, but 
They say there, there were some kind of aliens. That's why I do believe the great deception described in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, there very well could be some type of a connection with the explanation of the Antichrist being an extraterrestrial. Because I believe the world, again, is being prepared for that right now. So, again, part two, signs of the times. I want to give you one exhortation before I, I close, and that is from Mark chapter 13, 35 through 36. Jesus, as he takes, he takes the, the, the apostles, right? And this is, again, this is a, pi a private briefing with the four apostles. Luke chapter 21 is a public briefing for everybody who is following him. That was done earlier in the day. When you come to Matthew and Mark 13, it's a private briefing. And they, they asked him the question, when will Jerusalem be destroyed, the temple be destroyed? And, um, and Jesus said, right, not one stone would be left upon another. That happened in 70 AD. And then they asked him, and what will be the sign of your coming? Okay, and Jesus, he didn't give them a sign. What did he do? He gave them multiple signs. He said, uh, multiple signs. He says, there's going to be deception. There's going to be wars. There's going to be famines. There's going to be earthquakes and cataclysmic events. He said, those are the things, and there's going to be all kinds of, of crazy things that people are seeing in the Uranus, in the, in the atmosphere. And then he concluded by saying, watch. Watch, therefore, for you do not know when the master of the house is coming, in the evening, at midnight, at the crowning of the rooster, or in the morning, lest coming suddenly he find you asleep. And what I say to you, I say to all, watch. We are to be watching. We're, we're to be observing what's going on in the world around us, but we're to be watching for him. Because he can come just, right, he can come at any moment. He can come right now. He can come tonight. He can come tomorrow morning. Want me to tell you what time he's going to come? I could tell you. He's going to come at 8 or 9 or 10 or 11 or 12. By the way, if you understand all the different, right, all the different times in the world, at the, you know, at this, it's going to be at night in one place, it's going to be in day in the other. It's going to be the afternoon in one place, it's going to be at midnight at the other, right? But we need to be ready and we need to watch for his coming. Because you do not, folks, you do not want to be left behind. Believe me. You do not want to be left behind. Because you get into what's going on there in, that, in, in the tribulation period, it's hell on earth. It's hell on earth. And I think that many people are going to be saved during the tribulation who were sitting in churches and who did not watch. They didn't give their life to Jesus. And then suddenly he comes and he takes his bride out and then you have the seven years of tribulation, Jacob's trouble, Daniel's last week. And I believe many of those people are going to turn to the Lord and be saved. Because there's going to be a great soul harvest, Revelation chapter 7, during the tribulation. But you don't want to have to go through that. Be a part of the bride in this current day, in this current hour. Give your heart to Jesus. He gave his life for you. Take him into your heart. Make him your Lord and your Savior. Put your faith in him. He will spare you from hell, but I believe in this current hour, he will spare you from the tribulation. Amen? Let's just bow our heads. I'm going to invite up the musicians. We're going to have communion. Let's just pray together. Father, we just thank you, Lord God, for your word. And Jesus, we thank you. You know, you, you, you said, you told us beforehand. You told us before it happened as, as a warning. And Lord God, we take to heart this warning that you've given us and we pray in Jesus name that Lord God be our king be our God be our Lord let us be watchful Lord God of what's going on around us but Lord let us be watchful and have a heart of Maranatha the Lord cometh that Lord God you can come in any moment let us be ready for you 
In Jesus' name, amen. So take your cup and the bread. If you'd like to stand, you can stand. If you'd like to sit, you can sit. If you'd like to come to the altar, you can kneel. We come, Lord God, to your table in remembrance of you, in remembrance of what you did for us on the cross, Lord, in remembrance of you being raised from the empty tomb, Lord. For on that night, the Lord Jesus, he took the bread and he broke it and he gave it to his disciples and he said to them, take this, all of you, and eat this, for this is my body. He said, do this in remembrance of me and in remembrance of our Lord's death, we partake this morning. And then the Lord took the cup, he gave it to his disciples, and he said to them, Take us all of you and drink this, for this is my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. He said, Do this in remembrance of me. And in remembrance of our Lord's blood, that is his life, that washes away our sins. Hallelujah, Jesus. We all partake. The altars are open if you'd like to come forward for prayer. The worship team will lead us in a final worship song. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Frank. Challenging word, words of truth from the word of God. <clears throat> Watch and be ready. Yes, the altars are open if you'd like to come up here and Spend a little quiet time praying with the Lord or with somebody else. <clears throat> Bless the Lord of my soul, oh, of my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, oh, my soul, I worship your holy name the sun comes up it's a new day dawn it's time to sing your song again whatever may pass and whatever lies before be singing when the evening comes. Bless the Lord of my soul, oh, of my soul. Worship His holy name. Sing like never before, oh, my soul. I worship your Lord. So to end, your name is great and your heart is kind. Through all your goodness, I will keep on singing. Ten thousand reasons for my heart to find. Bless the Lord of my soul.
thousand years and then forevermore. Yes, forevermore. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Oh, oh my soul. Worship His holy name. Sing like never before. Oh my soul. I'll worship your holy name. Amen. Don't forget, men, see you here tomorrow.